What's going on, Doombots? Tony Skinjili here with the video that you guys asked for the most, which was when I was discussing the kind of tiers of spending. Now, this is more of a advice column based on your ability to spend and not necessarily this is the only thing you can do, but sometimes people kind of have an idea where they're willing to spend money in a game, and if so, this is the uh, what I consider to be the best use of that money going forward. The first thing I'll say is noted at the very bottom, which you can't really read, but I'll say it outside. Uh, every tier is recursive, which means if you pick uh, a tier at the end, like the $100 or $200 plus tier, uh, you can also include everything in previous tiers in the things that you should feel comfortable buying. It's They don't work ahead, so if you are in the lowest tier, which we'll get into, you should probably not pay too much attention to the thing in the tier above you, but you should almost definitely not pay attention to anything multiple tiers above you, lest you understand that you are now going to be spending a significantly larger portion of money than you had previously thought you were comfortable with. So, let's start. Again, this is about spending, so if you are not spending money in this game, or if you don't intend on spending money in this game, this video might not necessarily be for you, but then again, you can also plan accordingly if you do decide, hey, I enjoy this game, I want to throw $25 at it a month, like, or maybe something around that line, it's like, hey, this is what I would pay for a brand new game this month, but since I'm playing this and I love this game, go for it. And you can also kind of apply this general principle of spending to most mobile games. The only difference would then, of course, become what goes in the tiers, more or less. So. Let's talk about Marvel Strike Force. Let's talk about five to twenty-five dollars. Now, obviously, there's not many things that are under five dollars in general in this game. Obviously, if you're willing to spend anything here, you include them. But since there's nothing by name, I'm not going to. The most important thing to note is that when you're in this range, and this is a relatively small expenditure compared to the other stuff in the game, the things you really want to look out for when you're looking to spend money, and this is obviously per month, uh, is any power core offer. Now. Power cores, you, you, they're not really useful until you have none of them. So if you want to get a little bit more aggressive with your character refreshes or your energy refreshes, if you want to uh, refresh a store every now and then because you're just missing one part, you can always feel like spending between 10 and $20 on power cores might be a reasonable boost. I can tell you it for first hand from a free to play account. If I was interested in buying cores, there were things that definitely would have happened, especially time stuff like legendary unlocks that I would have had that I otherwise couldn't because I didn't have the cores. Obviously, you can do well in arena and get cores, or you can complete all milestones and get cores. But that's one of the things that if you want to spend a little bit of money, you can get a little bit of value out of it. Cheap character offers is the second thing, and that's any $1.99 to $4.99 offer. They come up every now and then. Sometimes they're amazing, like a legendary unlock character, like a Gru or a Drax or something. And sometimes they're, you know, Crystal and Mystique, which are still legendary unlocks, but not that high impact. In general, if you're willing to spend, you know, uh, $25 or under, you can always look at these $1.99 to $4.99 offers and decide that these 50 shards are definitely going to improve some aspect of your roster, no problem. The last one you want to look at is calendar offers. Now occasionally they'll release a calendar that's like $9.99 for a million gold over a month, and sometimes it's less than that. I think one time it was like $1.99 for a million gold over a week or something. And sometimes you'll see premium orb offers. That one's not worth it as much, but anything energy, anything in those offers that give you X things over seven days, they tend to be reasonably priced and therefore not inherently something you shouldn't be interested in. And you gotta keep in mind, if you're willing to spend between five and $25, you really need that to work for you. You need to get the most value. And the best things you as a player can get if you're only willing to spend that much money a month or you're interested in trying to keep it to that much money a month is the small things that just put you slightly ahead of where a free to play player would be, which of course is, additional character shards, some more cores that they might not get, and the calendars which give out stuff like gold and energy. Once you move to the next tier, that's your 25 to 50. I feel like more people are in this tier than anyone else. This is probably the widest tier of people who, more often than not, will be willing to spend a couple of bucks here or there, maybe buy one character a month, 
but they don't really go crazy. And if you're willing to spend between $25 and $50 a month, you know, usually the price of a new game or multiple on Steam if you're feeling froggy, that's where you look at a little bit more. So obviously, like I said, those three things up here, right here, they still count. You can obviously look at all of those. You can even buy more power cores. You can buy more calendar offers. You could buy additional cheap character offers if they happen across. But then you get to look at the other stuff that you kind of fit into your, well, I'm using the most I can. And one of them is energy bundles. Now you might not want to spend $9.99 on the $800 energy bundle if you're being very careful with your money. It just might not be as meaningful. But the $1,500 and the $3,000 one, uh, I believe they're $15 and $25 respectively. $24.99 or something. And this is, of course, USD. Uh, those are huge boosts to your roster. That's a lot of farming. It's a lot of extra gold. It's a lot of extra resources that anyone who doesn't get those offers can. Especially if you're before level cap, those offers are just going to rocket you past anyone else not spending that much money or effort. So those are really good purchases that help you a lot in the early game, a lot in the mid game. And honestly, even if you are at level cap, that's a lot of energy and gold that you're getting for $24.95. It's a lot of extra character shards. It's good value overall, especially if you have the places to spend it. Uh, the next thing on that list is team packs. If you start this game, and even now, if you're playing this game for six or seven months, and you're like, you know what? Uh, what do I spend? What do I get the best bang for my buck? All of the team packs, I'm excluding in this conversation the X-Men one, but the Sinister Six, the Guardians, and Defenders, obviously the Shield one is an option, and probably a good one, considering the fact that Shield's, uh, not Shield, but uh, all of those Wave 1 Avengers in the Shield pack are getting reworked, so good stuff on that pack right now. And you get a yo-yo. The point is, you're getting about 500 character shards for $24.99, and most of these character shards have a good value in the game. Even the Defenders, good in the early game, useful for clearing some of the city content that you need. The Guardians unlock Star Lord, useful for clearing cosmic content as well as hero stuff. Sinister Six, villain team, useful for unlocking two legendaries. You are going to get a huge jump start of 100 shards of each of those characters that anyone who isn't is just going to be far behind, which means you're going to be able to start working on other things faster than they are, which is going to keep you progress. The other one is most new slash repeat character offers kind of come in. Now, when I say new slash repeat, I, I specifically mean uh, if a character offer comes out and we'll use Emma Frost as a perfect example because she just came out recently. Emma Frost is, is a very good character. It doesn't take much to, to figure out how good she is, depending on where you are in the game, especially if you are closer to the end in the middle, like maybe you're just unlocked Ultron or you're maybe just about to. Then you could start looking at new character packs and saying, you know what? This character is supposedly really good. And, I've, you know, I've watched some people talk about it. I've watch Tony or I've watched other content creators uh, and you know what for $49.99 unlocking her will definitely benefit me going forward because I'm at the point where I'm not still building out my roster I'm finalizing or completing my roster and the same thing goes for repeat characters if a $49.99 offer comes out for Symbiote Spider-Man or anything underneath that you know, $30 for 35 shards or 50 shards, whatever those lines are, yo-yo offer for $24, any of those things come up, that's where you start to shine because you're getting very good, high quality, even Minerva for the sake of it, characters that you can apply directly and will overall improve the quality of life you have while you play the game, so therefore it's worth the money. Now, going into more details, I'm not saying that, hey, this month, for example, we're getting Baron Zemo and, and stuff like that. Like, if you're a newer player, those characters have to be incredibly important because one, you're not going to be able to farm them for a while, and two, very infrequently do new characters come out in offers that truly change the flow of the game for you in the early, mid, and even beginning of late game. Obviously, some are exceptions, but more often than not, those character offers don't really make a difference. And that's pretty much it. So the, you know, once you're at the $50, 25 to $50 range, these are the packs that make the most sense. These are the offers that for you are like, oh no, no. And yes, I understand some of these fit within the five to 25, but it has absolutely nothing to do with the reason they're separated. They're separated based on uh, what will improve the overall quality for the amount of money. And I think if you had $25, you would get more value out of buying power cores and cheap character offers, maybe occasionally buying 
one of the team packs like the first month of the game but as time goes on those team packs really start to become more useful to finishing the characters until you just don't need those shards anymore so it's more like what helps you at what level of spending you're interested in doing next here i think this is a smaller tier of players uh when it comes to people who are willing to spend the game um but not uncommon you, you'll actually see a lot of people kind of aggressively start in this tier and then slowly slide down very few people start here and then start moving up in price because they would have already made that financial decision earlier so the 51 to 100 dollar range again all of these things right here but in addition you could start buying any new character offer now i wouldn't recommend it same kind of rules apply but if you get to the point where you have your roster it's all everything's unlocked or reasonably unlocked and a new character comes out and you're like you know what i really like x23 go ahead and buy it it's part of your budget it's totally going to help you if you're willing to spend that much money, you're definitely in a situation where like getting a little bit ahead of the curve on the people around you or even keeping up with the people around you because they might be spending the same amount of money is going to be beneficial to you. Uh, the next thing is the legendary unlock offers. Uh, those would be any offer that's specifically related to a legendary unlock that otherwise wouldn't benefit you in general. So I know it sounds crazy, but like, uh, a Nobu offer, if you're trying to get Phoenix, that kind of falls into 50 to 100. If you're not willing to spend over $50 in the game, then when you buy that offer, you, you're getting a little bit of value, but you're losing a lot of where that value could have been had you just been spending it better, is a, a weird word to say, but more efficiently, maybe. So any, you know, a hand event or... Um, you know, for Black Bull, if you want to, if you're only missing a handful of shards and you want to buy those orb offers that they come out with, that's where you come out with the legendary unlock offers. In general, the legendary unlock offers do tend to come around as panic buys, like, oh no, I'm gonna miss it unless I do this. So be a little bit more careful about buying those than otherwise. But if you're willing to spend, like I said, between fifty and a hundred dollars. Uh, it's not a waste because you're you're within the realm of spending that helps you accomplish a meaningful task and therefore it's okay um, and again the reason I have that one even though those offers are usually in the 25 to 50 dollar ranges because it's inclusive and I don't want people to get well I, I bought power cores this month and then I bought an energy bundle and now there's a legendary unlock and oh my god I just spent 200 dollars I, I want you to kind of grip everything within the line and and see how your expected amount of money spent in this game should line up uh war packs and snack packs uh yes these are very cheap offers but the truth is you shouldn't be buying war packs which are the you know energy and, and boost energy um as well as a handful of credits as well as the stack packs which are the ones that have like raid uh heals and uh, blitz charges you shouldn't be buying those packs if you're will if you're not willing to spend a lot of money in this game because what you get out of them is not as beneficial as what you use your money for in, in lower stages sure you can get an extra one or two war attacks in but that's how many total war credits yes if you win the war because of it great but if you don't win the war you're only getting maybe an extra hundred war credits for the war store out of that pack not and not including what you pay for uh and then the snack pack and the blitz pack if you're pushing really 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 hard in raids that's so much so that you need raid heals maybe that money might be better spent on you know buying offers or new characters or more to strengthen your characters or to make sure that you can accomplish the tasks easier that aren't just use what you have and heal they're fine offers they're very cheap you can buy them anywhere but i wouldn't recommend them unless you were in that kind of pool of money where you can spend up to a hundred dollars and not feel biased about it uh i'm also going to include in this gold offers i don't think you ever really need to buy specific gold or amounts of gold but when again when money becomes less scarce when you can use more of it the amount of gold you get it doesn't necessarily matter if it's an efficient or good value because you have a use for it and it's a meaningful use uh the last thing i'll mention is specialty and sale offers sometimes you get amazing sales and everything is a dollar 99 or 2.99 
and and obviously that goes for everywhere but more often than not the specialty sale offers still fall in the 20 to 50 dollar range i i know it's crazy um like mega orbs sometimes go on sale for twenty dollars instead of twenty four dollars or whatever and and those are the offers you really want to look at here because there's usually an event running um and they'll say hey we're gonna do a red star event you know well if everything's on sale and it's a better value than normal you can wait for these offers to come out and feel free to spend 20 to 40 dollars that you normally wouldn't um, because that money would have been spoken for in buying other things at lower tiers uh, very infrequently do, do you ever see an offer that's worth more than 50 usd but it's happened in the past it might happen again and anytime you see a specialty sale because they're pushing something this is where uh, you need to be comfortable with that amount of spending in order to get to that point. The next tier up is uh, the 101 to $200 range and anywhere in between. Once you're willing to spend that much money in a mobile game, that's when the game kind of breaks wide open. Uh, obviously, like I said, everything before counts, but here's where I think you can start buying red stars and red star promotion credits and getting the most value out of them. Now this isn't necessarily speaking for players who are at eight or nine million TCP and don't really need to buy anything of the previous offers and don't even really wanna buy new characters that often because they don't have to and they wanna buy red stars. This is more for the average player. You really shouldn't be looking at red stars or red star promotion credits as, a, as an investment in your roster in any financial capacity because you don't really control them or anything else. So Red Stars, while you of course could buy the occasional bundle that is super cheap in the specialty sale event that I mentioned, in general the offers that you see, they don't improve the overall quality of roster or more realistically they probably won't improve the overall quality of your roster uh, unless you're willing to spend extra money on other stuff anyway. You know, if you open, was it the 14 pack of red star orbs and they're all two or three stars, that might be great the first time, but the second time you do it and it's all dupes, maybe you'll get a four and maybe it won't be Ravager, Bruiser, or Nebula. Who's to say? The point is, uh, red stars and red star promotion credits are more of an expenditure of somebody who not only is, is at the end game or close to the end game or functioning there, but also a little bit more free with the amount of money they're willing to throw at the game because that's where it doesn't actually matter if uh, there's uh, major jumps in growth because the incremental growth uh, might be more beneficial and an overall better investment. I hate using that word, but it works. The second is multiple purchases for new characters. Once you're in that range, feel free to buy two Emma Frost offers. This is my range for those who don't know. I'm in the $100 to $200 range. That said, I am frequently spending over $200 on this game because I am terrible at managing my money uh, <laughs> because I love to spend money on mobile games. It's a, it's a curse. I love it. It's well known. So I'm in this range, but I do frequently go slightly over this range. So I'm buying, I don't really buy red stars. That's a personal thing because I don't like gambling, but I do buy multiple character packs for characters that I think are good. I didn't buy multiple of these, but I bought both Emma packs. What's the difference? Well, the difference is I have a five-star Emma for I paid $100 for, and I have a three-star Beast that I paid $0 for. You know what I mean? Like, which one of those do I care the more about? So, so that's where you start looking at new character offers and being like, you know what? I'm not just gonna unlock this character. I'm gonna unlock and max out this character. And it doesn't even have to be a character max out whatever that means like uh for example going backwards we'll think like the corvus glaive right or um uh, proxima midnight any of the black order characters those are characters that people are speculating this would be the best team in the world and blah 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 and you would buy multiple packs just to make sure that they were stronger than someone who just bought one pack so you were just a little bit better than someone else but not necessarily better than someone who spent a ton of money etc but as you said, like notice that the pool gets smaller, right? Like once you get into the twenty-six to fifty-dollar range, there's a lot of value you get, you know. And as you don't need any more energy, or if you're not going to be buying team packs, new and repeat character offers are still part of that group. Uh, and as you know, you can start kind of scheming in as things from the previous bundles become less relevant. You may still only have you know forty dollars you want to spend a month. 
but maybe that lines up perfectly because this month there was nothing, no character you wanted, nothing cool. So you go ahead and buy war packs or you go buy gold offers. Maybe you're told in ahead of time, which they never do, that there's a sale coming a month from now. And you're like, you know what? This paycheck or this, you know, yeah, this paycheck, I, I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm going to be ready for the sale. Uh, once you get to the 200 plus, and I, I know a lot of people are going to feel a way about this, but uh, th seriously, the difference between $200, uh, $201, whatever, and uh, $2,000 a month is uh, the amount of money you, afford, you can afford to spend. That's it. There, like, once you get to that point, especially in this game, in other games, that could be different. And for very few situations where that might not apply. But in this game specifically, like, if you're willing to spend $200, that means you have $200 that you can spend on a mobile game. And and the only difference between you and someone spending $2,000 is that they have $2,000 that they're willing to spend on a mobile game and you don't. Because if you did have $2,000, you'd be like to, to, you know, whatever your budget for fun or whatever is called, you would spend it there too. You know, like once you get to $200, it's everything is on the line, but then it says whatever you can afford. Like that that's literally what it means. Like. Oh, you want to buy gold uh, promotion credits for $180 for 20? Yeah, go for it, man. Like, have fun. Go nuts. Whatever. Who cares? It's none of it's real. And this is all digital currency. Like, do whatever you want. And 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 that's why I'm not going into too much detail about 200. Because uh, again, if you're willing to spend $200, you don't necessarily need this review. You don't need to look and say like, yeah, no, I'm gonna buy all these things. And honestly, if you spend over $200 a month, I actually don't want your opinion on whether or not you think these are in the right categories or not because you clearly don't care because for you you're spending money and you're getting your money's worth of value so that's kind of where uh 200 plus dollars is just spend money on whatever you want it does not matter do whatever makes you happy whatever you believe is right efficiency then just becomes a slight issue maybe you can look at this list and say Okay, you know, maybe I'll buy one red star promotion credit a month and you know, I'll buy that $50 red star offer or the $30 red star for whatever it is And then I'll buy an inner a new character pack and an energy bundle uh, And a war pack every other week every two weeks I'll buy a war pack something like that and now you're like, okay I'm building my own little smorgasbord of, of random stuff, but that's pretty much the core of uh, of This thing and then again, thank you guys for watching I know I talked about this a lot, but I wanted something that people who are both new to the game and maybe some people who've been in this game for a while and are just like me where they're like I don't know what I'm supposed to be spending or people who don't know how to look up how much they've spent on their respective app store and went wow I had no idea that I spent $280 on this game last month or wow um, I, I, you know, I have a limit on my account and I can only spend $25 because of whatever reason. These are the things that I hope will help you kind of guide your purchasing and help you control a little bit of, of where you want to be when it comes to mobile spending. And again, I will, as more games come out, you'll see me as I do content for other stuff, you'll see me do this kind of application as I understand the spending of most games. Marvel Strike Force is incredibly different from most mobile games in that a lot of the offers are kind of IP tax for being a Marvel game, where some other games with even Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, their offers are cheaper, but you don't get as much. It's weird. Everything is super weird when it comes to mobile game pricing. Basically, they charge you what they think you'll pay and they keep charging you if you keep paying it. So the reason all the offers are where they are is because people keep buying them. And if you have a problem with the offers, tell everybody you know to stop buying the offers, which they won't do and it won't matter. So don't even bother with it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good night, have a great day. Comment below, let me know if uh, you believe uh, that you fit in any of these offers or if you go like, hey, you know, uh, I think that I've been like $51, but I buy Red Star credits or something like that. Just comment below and let me know what you think on this stuff and uh, you know, we can talk about it more. But that's pretty much it. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Sinjili, and I'll catch you later.